Welcome to our skills training project. We decided to do the AFL umpire centre bounce. We ranked it as a 14 on Gentile's two dimension taxonomy, which means it is a fairly tough skill to master. We chose this skill as Ollie is an AFL umpire and has been for seven years. He umpires at a high level, being premier grade in the VAFA, and is currently in the process of perfecting the skill. Ollie was a coach for this program. The learner for this program was Keegan. Keegan has been involved in soccer for 14 years and is still heavily involved. His previous experience with AFL is extremely limited and does not attempt to watch any of the sport. We initiated our program with a pre-test. The test consisted of Keegan performing 10 centre bounces on the grass, and for each bounce, Ollie would indicate whether the bounce stayed inside the circle or not, and whether the height of the bounce was over 4 metres. In order for a bounce to be overall successful, it has to be successful in these two measures. This test is similar to the one they do for VFL umpires, as they have to get a total of 8 out of 10 successful bounces. Ollie observed the bounces and took note on a piece of paper. We then collated this data and put it into a table form. In the pretest, Keegan achieved a 6 out of 10 for height, 4 out of 10 for whether it was in the circle or not, overall giving him 2 out of 10 successful bounces. In the first session, the learner viewed pictures and videos of professional AFL umpires performing the skill. By doing this, the learner knew what was expected before performing the skill. At the start of each session, the learner began by warming up with two laps around the square, followed by stretches to loosen up the legs and lower back. Session 2 was about familiarisation with the ball and the ball grip. The ball grip begins with hands spread evenly at both ends of the ball as if you are holding a large burger. Holding the arms above the head with elbow slightly bent, which got the learner used to the arm motion. Stepping into the bounce with a strong leg stance, enabling the learner to practice being stable and bending forward at the waist with a slight knee bend which got the learner into the release position. Each of these drills were done 20 times. The visual cues for the bouncing motion included lowering the arms in a rapid downward motion, bending from the hips, and using the wrists, elbows and shoulders to gain extra power. Week 3 focused on the arm motion, standing up and the ball release. The drills included were 25 flat ball bounces, followed by 25 pumped up ball bounces. The purpose of the flat ball bounce made the learner focus on the technique of the ball release rather than the height and the accuracy. The visual cues for the ball release included releasing the ball as late as possible to maximise accuracy and tucking in the head when releasing the ball so you don't hit yourself in the head. Week 4 focused on the follow through and bouncing on hard surfaces. The follow through is an important aspect in maximising height and accuracy. The learner practiced 50 bounces on a hard surface, followed by touching the ground from a horizontal position without the ball and then with the ball. By practicing on a hard surface, the learner only has to work on his technique if the ball will go high enough. The visual cues included in the follow through were the fingers touching the grass and flicking the arms away after releasing the ball. The first session of week 5 focused on height. The drill involved 50 bounces on grass, so the learner was asked to forget about accuracy and fling the ball into the ground as hard as possible. Finally, the post-test, which would see how far the learner had come over the five weeks. The main cues the learner was asked to focus on were a strong leg base, bending at the hips, a horizontal position on release, and releasing the ball as late as possible. Like the pretest, Ollie observed the bounces and took note on a piece of paper, which was then put into table form. Keegan received a 7 out of 10 for height, 5 out of 10 for whether it was in the circle or not, overall giving him 4 out of 10 successful bounces. This meant, over the 5 week training program, Keegan had improved from 2 out of 10 successful bounces to 4 out of 10 successful bounces. 
A week after the training program was finished, Keegan completed a retention test. We took into account the same variables as there were in the pre and post test. Here you go. Keegan scored 7 out of 10 for height, 6 out of 10 for whether it was in the circle or not, giving him an overall score of 5 out of 10 successful bounces. Things the learner needs to work on are the follow through, which will help with accuracy and height, keeping his head down after release, since the learner focused too much trying to see where the ball was going. Slowing down the whole process, as he seemed to be a bit rushed at times. And a stronger bend from the waist, which will also help to generate height. From my perspective as the learner, I think Ollie gave great feedback throughout the sessions. By using knowledge of performance, he could tell me where I was going wrong and how I could correct this. In one session, we did a specific drill to combat the fact that my fingers were not going low enough. I believe the quantitative way of measuring performance was of a good standard, especially knowing the fact that they do this to test VFL umpires gives it a bit of authenticity. We initially tried to use distributed practice, however, due to time restraints and location, this became too difficult, so we reverted to mass practice. I believe this still helped as my number of successful bounces still slightly rose for the retention test.